What is going on guys? Matt here from Become Elite and today I'm going to teach you how to curl the ball. Um, a lot of you guys might know this as a banana kick or a curving kick or a curler. There's a lot of different names but I'm just going to show you the basic technique of how I like to curve a soccer ball. So first things first, I want to let you guys know that I really think that there's two ways to curl a ball. You can do more of the chip curl, where you kind of get underneath it and it kind of chips up and it's more of a lofted curler. It has less power, but you can usually get more spin. This is the type of kick that you see on Instagram with like Lewandowski or Neymar or Messi where they're behind the goal and they slowly kind of just chip it up and it spins from a negative position behind the goal into the goal. And then the other kick is more of a driven shot. And for this, you don't get that so much loft and as much spin on the ball, but you can get more power and a quicker dipping shot. And so this is like the two types of curling shots that I'm gonna show you. So to understand really how to do these kicks, you have to realize that there are three different aspects that really go into these kicking motions. The first is the contact on the ball. So I've made a little diagram right here with crosshairs and the blue area, which is where you wanna make contact on the ball. This first area is more to the center, just a little bit down into the right. This area on the ball is where you kick it if you're right footed. So if you're left footed, just switch that blue circle to the other side of the ball. And so just a little bit down from the center and a little bit to the right. And so for this, it's almost like a knuckle shot where it's right in the center, but a little bit low, but you're just gonna get a little bit more spin and dip. The higher up on the ball you're gonna get, the lower the ball's gonna stay, and the lower you go in that blue circle, the higher the ball's gonna go. So this next blue area is just a little bit to the right. And so you're not gonna get that super high lofted shot, but you're gonna get more spin and less power. This is a good one for like a, a really finessed shot or pass where you just really need to curve it around something and you're not so worried about how high it goes. Your main aspect is just to go around. And again, you're not gonna get the same amount of power as the previous kick, but you're gonna get more spin and almost more control with it too. And finally, this blue oval is lower and more to the center. And for this, you're gonna get a lot of loft. So this is a really good one if you wanna hit it over something and kind of around. So if that defender's coming at you quick and you need to loft it up and around him and up all the way to the forward while you're bypassing a midfielder, this is a good way to kind of curl it up and around. This can also be done if you wanna chip it to the far post if you're kind of really finessing it. But you gotta be careful because you really can get a lot of loft without that much power. Number two is where you make contact on your foot. So I have a, a soccer shoe right here that I, I typically use. So we never wanna kick the ball and do a curling shot. If I wanna make that more dip action and I hit more to the center of the ball, I'm gonna use more of the laces kind of instep area of the foot. Because if you, if you keep your foot down and pointed down when you strike the ball, it's gonna be like a, a laced knuckle shot. But if you open up your foot slightly and kind of hit it more with instep, you're gonna get more of that curl. The more instep you go, the more of a kind of curl you're gonna get, and the higher up in the laces, the more of a, a power shot you're gonna get. So here's me showing like a power shot approaching the ball. I'm over it and driven. And here's me showing how you glance by the ball. And here's me actually doing it. And then if you want more of a lofted shot, instead of hitting it more on the center area of your foot, you're gonna come down and hit it more with like the bunion area is what I call it. So right here, so power shot, when you hit it right with the laces right up here, open up that foot and you hit it right here, a little bit lower for that dipping shot. The more you open and raise your foot and hit it with the instep, the more spin you're gonna get. And then if you come back down and hit more of the bunion area, you're gonna get more of a loft. So that's like the four kind of areas that you're gonna kick the ball. And so I hope that you can see that on the ball and on the foot, just an inch makes a big difference on the type of kick that you're gonna do. So you have to do tons and tons of practice to really master hitting the right spot on the foot with the right spot on the ball. And finally, it's your body position. So the more you get over the ball, I hope you guys know the more driven the shot or the pass that you're gonna do, and the more you're leaning back, the higher up the ball is gonna go. So as you can see, what I'm gonna do is when I do a, a lofted curler, I'm leaning back. So when I plant my foot, my chest is up almost to the sky, and I'm kind of just focused on just glancing by the ball and leaning back. If I wanna do a driven curler, 
my body's over the ball, almost like a power shot. The only difference is where I hit the ball with the foot. So here's a good example of a lofted shot. I'm leaning back and really just kind of brushing by the ball. See how my chest is up and I'm really just kind of sweeping by, landing on my plant foot. And then here's a more driven shot. It's more powerful and my chest is really over the ball and it's almost like a power shot. It's just that my foot is open when I kick it. So by mixing and matching those three aspects, you can really alter the type of kick that you want. So you have to go outside for yourself right now and practice hitting with different parts of the ball, with different parts of the foot, with different body positions. Mix and match and see what works for you. So here are both the clips, again in slow motion, just so you can really see both techniques kind of broken down. I hope this helps. I hope that this gives you a general idea of how to curl the ball using different techniques and different styles. And I hope you guys learned something from watching this video. So be sure to like and comment, you know, how this is working for you or if this helped you. And finally, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can stay up to date with all the new content that I'm just pumping out. So I hope that helped guys. Have a great day.